Hello, and welcome to What Would Larry Do? I am Dr. Ann, and I am here with Larry Helwig on this uh, wonderful Tuesday afternoon, coming in after a long holiday weekend. And that it was. It was a fun, <laughs> relaxed weekend, and it exhausted me. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I'm not going to lie. We're usually here on Friday mornings and we're complaining about the end of it, uh, end of a long week. However, I'm not going to lie, trying to do this right after a long weekend of relaxing is so much worse. <laughs> yeah, we're better under the stress. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently so. But we actually have a really important topic to talk with you guys today. Um, we have a very special guest. This is Mary Claire. She's the direct or the uh, director of social media services at what we call PGC or Projected Growth Consulting. And she's here to talk about why social media is an important part of your business. So welcome, Mary Claire. Hello, thank you so much for having me. We're excited to have you because every talk that I give at every workshop, every event, that's, you know, uh, there's always one or two people talking about social media. And it has become like if you're not doing it, you're you're nowhere. And uh, but I don't think everyone is doing it right. Yeah. And so I think you can help everyone. <laughs> yes, there's <laughs> definitely some people that can use some direction out there, and it's not their fault. Social media can be fun, but it can be very complicated. Uh, there's a lot of nuance to it, and I think uh, sometimes it just takes a little bit of understanding of the that nuance to really make it great so that's some things that we can get into today uh, to really take some small tips and integrate those and be able to make your social media campaign really stellar i i have a confession <laughs> <laughs> early in the show this is early for a confession but i did not want social media it's like i went into it kind of kicking and screaming and I thought, I don't want this, I don't need this, you know, we get referrals, blah, blah, blah. But I have to say, you guys did a great job and um, and we're excited. We're, you know, it, the, the more I see things and the more I understand it, you know, it, it's all good. I'm just laughing because neither of us is a huge fan of social media. Yeah. Like, like literally we want nothing to do with it at all. However, we understand how important it is for our business, which is why we have you guys on board to do it for us because neither of us wants anything to do with it. But you have to have a social media presence as a business in this day and age. I mean, that is, there. there's no other way to say it other than that. Yeah, I agree. Absolutely. Yeah. It's so funny you said you want nothing to do with it. You hate social <laughs> media because we hear that from about 99.9% .9 of the business owners that we work with. And, you know, then some, nobody likes it. Nobody wants to do it. Nobody wants to be a part of it. But then once you kind of see whether you're working with a company who's doing it for you, or you really get into doing it on your own, once you see those results and you see all of the happy comments and DMs and how much people love the content you're putting out, it almost becomes addicting and you really do start to love it. Yes. Yeah, I, I think it has grown on me a little bit because boy, <laughs> like I get on Instagram and you know, after 10 minutes, it's work. You know, it's like, <laughs> really, I'm still going through all this stuff, you know, and Facebook, I cannot even stand to go there anymore. So for me, it's still difficult. But for the business, I definitely understand what's happened. And uh, I don't think anyone, especially new offices. Yeah. How, how would you function nowadays without social media? Well, and let's just start off with the simple question of why social media is important to the medical aesthetics business. Like that's just a, you know, a blanket question that we're going to fire at you is why is it so important to our business in medical aesthetics? Yeah, that's a great question that I actually get asked all of the time. And the short answer is uh, it's very important. And so uh, <laughs> social media. I'm so surprised you'd say that. <laughs> Uh, the long answer, uh, and it's it's there's a lot to kind of dig into there, is that, you know, not only has it changed the way that we do business overall, but it's also created a lot of new opportunities to really reach massive new audiences, connect with your existing customers, increase your brand awareness, generate more leads, and of course, ultimately, what everybody wants to hear and wants to do is to increase your revenue. So, let's get into a little bit exactly how social media can do all of those things. 
so the digital marketing landscape, if you've been doing this for a while, uh, really is ever changing and evolving. What worked even last month can be detrimental to your account this month. Uh, but the events of 2020 really kicked the growth of social media into high gear. And it's actually really changed the way that consumers view, use, and even value social media. Uh, so for example, since 2020, 43% of consumers have actually increased their social media use to discover new products in the last year. Uh, and I think that's a big deal. And yeah, that trend is really only expected to increase over the next three years. So as more people become accustomed to that social first customer journey, I think it's really important for business owners to be prepared to take advantage of the trend and really have that solid social media strategy in place. Um, you know, 62% of even consumers believe that brands need a strong social presence to succeed in the long run. Um, and I mean, I think your online presence is really one of the most important marketing tools, second to having a stellar practice, right? So social media is really more than just that trend. It's an essential piece of that marketing strategy, like you guys mentioned earlier. Um, so one of the major things that it can provide for your business is that brand awareness, you know, if people don't know about you, uh, they can't become your clients, <laughs> point blank, right? So social media channels really boost your visibility among potential clients and allow you to reach that wide audience, increase your brand awareness. Um, and it's just as much a place for discovery as it is for a place of entertainment. I think uh, there's always that uh, mix of, I don't want to get on there and, and do a dance, <laughs> right? Well, don't worry, you don't have to do that. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I kind of want to see Larry dance. <laughs> I used to dance, you know, semi-professionally. <laughs> we, we need this. We need it for our social media. You was, realize this now. It was at a bar. You know, I, <laughs> no, we won't go there. For only tips, right? Yeah. 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 Larry, what are, the, what are the chances now that we can get you to, to do a dance for, uh, for the next reel we make for you? <laughs> I, I think we're going to hold off on that. We're going <laughs> to save the public from, you know, the torture and abuse. <laughs> okay. We won't go there. <laughs> no, but I do want to bring up a good point because you brought up a term a couple of times that what do you mean by brand awareness? Because sometimes, you know, we hear that term, but when mm -hmm. you're saying that, what do consumers perceive this as? Yeah, that's a, a great point. And so consumers uh, really perceive your brand awareness as there's a couple of things to get into there, right? So one is your brand as a whole, the look, the feel of your brand, uh, being able to recognize your business for its, you know, its colors, its look, its feel, being able to look at a piece of content from your business and recognize it as clear skin, right? Uh, another thing of uh, when we talk about brand awareness is staying top of mind. So, which is another thing that social media really is amazing for, <laughs> repeatedly reminding your audience that you exist by consistently showing up on those news feeds when they decide to take a few minutes to kick back and scroll. So it's a really great way to kill two birds with one stone. You know, remind your audience that you exist by educating them about your product services and specials, um, and then promotion of products and services on social media platforms like Facebook and Instagram uh, being much easier in the digital world uh, where you can easily put up videos and images of your products and their details, right? Um, and 93% of consumers actually have said that video is helpful in the process of purchasing a product or service. And 85% of businesses are already using video as a marketing tool. So social media is just a really excellent way to expand the reach of that video content um, and your brand. So essentially, anytime that they are scrolling through and they're seeing a video or a graphic um, of you and your brand, we are solidifying that you exist and really creating that connection between your brand and the products and services that you're providing so that when they start to think about anything in the aesthetics industry or any of the products and services that you're providing, your company, your brand comes top of mind to them. So, so, so every time you bring on a new product, you use it as a way to let everyone know you have a new product and what it does. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, definitely. And let's put up our video of um, eye-catching videos. Well, we kind of talk about the importance of video and, and where that has changed social media as well in the last couple of years, because I feel like in the last three years or so, that's been a huge change is here. We can see right now, here's a couple examples of eye catching videos. There's lip injections going on over there on the left. On the right hand side, we see an actual laser resurfacing procedure going on. So these are different videos that different um, 
companies have posted for their social media to give an example of what consumers like to see, correct? Yeah, absolutely. And something really important that I think to know on these videos is that they're easy. There's there's not a huge production going on. There's not a ton of editing. Those are really simple photos and video, I'm sorry, videos that were taken with an iPhone. Um, and it was easy to do. They're just a few seconds long and those went viral. Um, it's really about finding what's interesting and what's going to catch the eye um, rather than you know really putting all this time and energy and effort into creating this huge production. So that should be a big relief for any uh, you know, potential business that's thinking about getting on and, and using this video content. Um, and something that I wanted to touch on uh, that you said is you know, in the last couple of years, moving toward video-based content, uh, that is no coincidence that you've recognized that. Uh, Instagram CEO actually announced in his 2022 priorities video that Instagram is going to be moving away from a primarily photography-based platform to actually start to focus on that video content. Interesting. Uh, and that is because of TikTok, really. Uh, yeah. The success of TikTok, everyone wants to emulate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, and um, that should lead us into our next topic is, is what are people doing wrong on social media? Because I feel like that that is a huge can of worms to open versus more talking about what you should do is I feel like it's what should you not be doing? That's actually a really great question. <laughs> um, so I think, like you said, talking about what you shouldn't be doing can really help to give a really uh, good visual and idea of what you should be doing, right? So I can kind of start by giving an example of an account that are doing all of the wrong things, okay? So <laughs> let's imagine you log on to Instagram, uh, you see a post from a medical spa, and you go to their feed. Um, and on their feed, you are seeing all different graphics. Uh, every graphic looks very different. They're using different colors, different yep. fonts. Uh, there is, yes, like that. Here we go. Um, <laughs> you know, nothing really looks the same. Nothing has a cohesive feel. Uh, there's no uh, hashtags in the, in, the, uh, in the captions or in the comments. There's zero content from their office. So there's no photos or videos of their staff or of the treatments that they're actually offering happening in office. Uh, they're not responding to any of the very few comments that they actually might be getting. Uh, and maybe on top of that, they've gone ahead and purchased 50,000 fake followers from an overseas marketing company that is promising them amazing results. <laughs> yeah. And it's all generic uh, is what it is. It's generic, like cut out photos that you can purchase from somebody instead of being real photos that you have generated yourself. Exactly. Uh, there's a lot to unpack there uh, when it comes to the graphic and the graphic design. Um, so maybe it might be good to get into kind of each of the offenses that I just listed. Um, <laughs> so when it comes to the cheesy graphics that you just mentioned, uh, really a great way to gauge that for yourself because everybody's eye is a little different is the more it looks like a magazine advertisement or maybe a traditional print ad, the worse it's going to perform. The more likely social media users are going to be to kind of scroll past it uh, and the less likely the algorithm is going to be to boost it up and give you a push or views from more users. Uh, so if you are going to choose a stock photo for your graphics, it can be done tastefully and artfully, but you just really want to choose it wisely, which is easier said than done. So when in doubt, take a photo in your office and use that instead. And I promise you it will perform better than a cheesy stock photo. <laughs> and I think we have some photo examples of like what you should do versus what you shouldn't do as far mm -hmm. as like, you're right, them seeing actually you. So we've got some actual social media pictures of what we've been doing in our office versus those stock photos. Not that the stock photos can't be cute, but it, it's very different when you're actually feeling and seeing like you're connecting with the people in the office. Exactly. And, you know, for your existing clients, they love you. Like they love your staff, you know, especially you guys that just have such a wonderful personality. And so, it, you know, it's what they expect to see on social. The people are going on social because they want that authentic connection, which is so important uh, when it comes to your, your social media performance. And so, uh, you know, utilizing those actual photos from your office is going to be so, so huge in the success and overall performance of the account. Yeah, no, I agree. I, it, it does make a huge difference because if you feel like it's a personal connection, and I feel like that's what people are looking for, 
mm-hmm. the, the, you know, bringing up 2020 and COVID and, and people being secluded to their homes and, and really people were left with social media for their personal connection. And that's really what they were looking for. And if you did mm-hmm. not give them that personal connection, they were not attracted to you. Yeah, it's like <clears throat> building a relationship. Yes. How do, you, how do you do that? You know, you've got, uh, you know, 10 seconds or whatever it might be. Mm-hmm. What what image do you want everyone to see of you or your office? So, mm-hmm. yeah. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, that <laughs> authenticity and trust are just so important to consumers overall. Uh, and that's one of the cool things about social media is it's a really great opportunity to humanize that brand and have that really nice, authentic human connection. Uh, it allows you to really highlight the people and personalities who make up your practice and show how existing customers and clients are using and benefiting from the service and products. You know, that authenticity really builds trust. Trust in turn builds marketing receptiveness and drives new business. And I think social media is one of the best places to do that. So let's talk about what people are doing right on social media, because at first we always focus on what people are doing wrong, what we want to change. But obviously there's some really good things going on out there because social media is growing people's businesses faster than ever. So what are some of the things that businesses are doing right on social media? Great question. Um, So using that consistent branding. So if they are using graphics, which again can be done well, Um, they all have a really nice cohesive look and feel to them. They're using the same brand colors, they're using the same fonts, uh, and it all flows very nicely with each other on the page. Uh, And then this way, if somebody sees one of their graphics, they, a user doesn't have to use too much brain power to put two and two together that it's your brand, right? Uh, At 2 a.m. when they're half asleep and scrolling in bed, uh, their subconscious picks up your content as your content and again solidifies that top of mind brand awareness. Uh, Another thing that they're doing right is educating about their products and services in a way uh, that educating about their products and services in a way that is establishing them as an authority is Mm -hmm. interesting and valuable to the user and is entertaining. So if you're really doing it right, your posts can do all of those things in one fell swoop, right? Um, So you don't just want to be always selling, selling, selling on social. Uh, If you're, every post you're making is, you know, having that ask of, you know, purchase now, we have this great special, Uh, your audience is just going to tune out and unfollow very quickly. Um, So when you're doing this right, you know, you might just be posting a really awesome educational video about how the, this one particular laser treatment works, right? Okay. To you as a, as a, you know, somebody in the industry, this might be something that you are, you know, just it's old hat. It's not really that interesting to you anymore, but to somebody who's not familiar with it, it's fascinating. And so we can really take advantage of that interest um, by just posting about, hey, this is how it works. And then having that client reach out to you uh, to get the details rather than you begging them, which can kind of come off as inauthentic and salesy, which again is something we want to avoid. No, absolutely. Fantastic. Well, I keep thinking about some of the videos that we've done and uh, posts, and it seems like uh, the thing that I'm not thinking about when I do it is the relationship we're trying to build. A lot of times I'm just, oh yeah, okay, I'll make a video, you know? And mm-hmm. and the videos, I mean, you look at technology now and how cool it is. I mean, what it does, you know, a lot of people aren't even aware it exists. Yeah, And yeah. so trying to get that image, take that image and, and talk about it and put it out there, of exactly what it's doing and let people know about it because we're surprised at how many people are totally unaware of of what's going on with technology and how it's changed and how good it is. So, yeah. Well, I, I, and I always joke with Larry, you know, because he's been in the industry much longer than I have. And I've been in the industry for 15 years. He's probably been in the industry for 25 years. So I always say I got in on the ground floor. He got in on the sub-basement floor. <laughs> So that, that makes me a couple years older, just a oh, couple. Only five to 10. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but either way, the, the point of it is, is we've been doing this for so long that it's like we, you know, can sleep and still, or I guess eat, breathe and sleep biophysics. You know, we, we know laser biophysics so well by the back of our hand that it always amazes us sometimes when we come into contact with people and they have no idea what we're talking about with laser biophysics. But we've been doing it for so long, and there's so many new people, including consumers, Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. that have zero idea about what laser biophysics means. So when we're explaining to them why they need a procedure, they think we're speaking a foreign language. Yeah. And the growth of the industry is so big right now. Yes. I mean, it's like, and, and the, so these are newbies. Yes. A lot of new people getting into the industry need to know, you know, so... This is something where everyone that's involved needs to know and how to get that information and get them excited to, to learn more about it, I think is a big deal. Yeah. So yeah. anyway, social um, media I know can help with that. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and you know, that's that's what I'm saying is, you know, the people who've never even seen one of those videos we showed earlier, which was a, a CO2 treatment, uh, went viral just because it's so interesting to people who've never seen it before. Yeah. And so uh, that's a really great example of a video that is really educating about a product or service in a way that's not salesy or inauthentic. We're just highlighting the benefits, showing how it works, and getting people interested um, to ask you for more information. Uh, and so when I say all of this, that doesn't mean that any of your posts about your products uh, or specials or special offers are bad. They're important and you need them. But what you really need to do right is have that really healthy mix of content where you're educating educating, you're highlighting your staff. You know, maybe you post a photo of the doctor with a cup of coffee saying good morning or uh, the esthetician holding a syringe uh, saying she's so excited to start the day. You know, it, it's not every post uh, has to have that call to action or that ask for the sale. It's, it's really having that strategy that has that healthy mix of content to give your users value. Uh, and that's another really big thing is, is giving that user value. You have to think of yourself as a social media user. Um, you know, what do you want to see? So maybe throwing some humor in there and throwing in some tips, right? Maybe some skincare tips or tricks, uh, rem a reminder to drink your water because that's really great for your skin, right? Um, <laughs> just little things like that to, to, throw in and uh, having to rein yourself back from trying to feel like your social media might just be a marketing board for all of your wonderful specials that you have going on. Well, and, and speaking of that, you know, we have another video that's like tips for reels that are out there, which are some of the, the videos and things that are going on that would be tips for our listeners or what some of the things that they should be doing for their social media. So mm -hmm. let's talk a little bit about this. Yeah. Absolutely. So reels, again, are a huge push for Instagram right now. And that's because Instagram, again, is trying to compete with TikTok. And yes. so when we look at this reel, uh, what we see is that it's concise. Uh, social media users right now have the manufactured attention span of a goldfish. It's like three <laughs> Uh, so even if you have a super interesting reel, like showing the threads, uh, if you show one of these clips for too long, they're going to scroll past to the next video because they're bored. <laughs> so you really need to catch the eye, make them go, what is that? What's going on there? Want to watch and learn more. And then once you get their attention, you have to keep it by keeping your shots quick and concise and then provide value in that post. So, you know, in that example, we were seeing the different benefits shown with it. Um, and we were seeing how kind of quick it was going. So you don't want to drone on forever. You just want to keep it really short and interesting and definitely practice with reels. Um, keep trying. Instagram is really rewarding reels content right now. Uh, when Instagram releases a new feature, they usually will reward you as a user for utilizing it by boosting okay. it up to a couple more viewers or users than you normally would get. Um, so because they're pushing reels right now, utilizing reels in your strategy is going to help you get a lot more eyeballs on your content. That's good to know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because see, we, it's like those little things of knowing that they're going to help boost it for you, which when it's something new to them that your average user does not even know. Mm -mm. Tave, more reels. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> right. Wait, Larry, that's your job. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'll start first thing in the morning. <laughs> I'm just start videoing everything. <laughs> oh. Yes. Oh. We just and joke because like we're on video a lot and we both can do stuff. But as far as catching the videos and being able to get it out there, we are completely helpless. <laughs> That's so helpless. <laughs> And the cool thing about reels is that it's really encouraged to kind of repeat trends and copycat trends. So the nice thing is you don't have to spend a ton of time coming up with your own original content. It's one of the only social media platform types along with TikTok where no one's going to be mad at you for copying their video because that's kind of the culture of it. So it's an easy place to get inspired. 
I do want to talk about some of like the current trends that we've seen out there with social media. And um, I know one of the things that she had brought up too is like the social media sales funnel, which they're the different pathways that people, once they first see your posts and how it actually goes down and transitions to them being a customer, right? Because, right. you know, the importance of social media being out there is to bring customers in, but not every post you get is going to generate one. So I think that that's where we need to, you know, kind of talk about that sales funnel and how it comes down as well and how your actual posts are going to generate true leads that are going to lead to the sales. Well, well, some are, you know, I think just being out there, right? It's not necessarily for a lead. Yeah. Right. You're just doing something to always stay out there and to let people know you're out there and what you're doing. Some are really educational and that yes. can lead to a lead. Well, and education right. is what we teach in consultations, right? <clears throat> that's right. And that's build trust. Yes. So all of those things kind of go together. So I totally buy into that. Um, I think uh, the relationship thing, that's part of that trust. Yep. Um, so I think that's all good. I, I think... <clears throat> I think the weakness is people don't realize, like I, in all these years, I don't really realize how many opportunities we have every day to put out really good content. Yeah. And we're not doing it. Yeah. You know, it's like, <laughs> oh yeah, it's a good idea. Somebody because we do get that. too busy get and busy. we forget. Yeah. And you know what? That's just an excuse though. And I, I will admit I'm more guilty of that than anybody else. I'll be like, I'm too busy for that right now. But yet you're missing an opportunity. Well, one of the things in one of our laser classes, we literally laser the heels. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, take the dead callus off with a laser. Yes. And they just lay there, and they don't feel a thing. And Zero. it makes it so soft and so smooth. Well, I think if people saw that, it'd be like, oh, my God, I had no idea. You know, it's <laughs> like, look at what they're doing. You know, I'd be, I'd, you know, it's educational. Yeah. It'd be fun. Yeah. So... We need to be thinking about stuff like that when we're doing it because yeah. there's so much of it all the time. I agree. And then, you know, when we're doing the scalp with microneedling RF and all that and using exosomes and that type of thing, I mean, yeah, I, I think about it after the fact. <laughs> all right. Of do course. we have you back, Mary Claire? Yes, I'm so sorry okay. about that. <laughs> no, that's okay. But I think it's a good time to talk about that that social media sales funnel. Like, wh wh how does that actually work down into growing your business? Yeah, that's a great question. And I really love using this uh, analogy of the social media sales funnel because it's important to understand that your organic social media campaign really is a long-term game. And understanding the social media sales funnel can help you kind of have some patience uh, when you launch your social campaign and you're not having your phone or DMs ringing off the hook within the first week. Uh, and so to kind of get into the, the social media sales funnel, it's really just a path that facilitates the conversion of generated leads into customers. So the funnel really charts that path to conversion from the moment that somebody gets to know your brand or recognizes your brand on social all the way through to when they actually schedule a consultation or make a purchase with you. And at each stage of the funnel, you have the option of using several different tactics to kind of influence their behavior in order to steer them in the right direction. So the social media marketing funnel begins when a potential lead discovers your brand and then continues until they convert into that customer. Uh, it culminates and really ends, uh, the true end of that funnel is not just them purchasing, it's actually them becoming a brand ambassador, leaving you a great review or word of mouth referrals or tagging their friends on your content, um, generating further leads, which is great. So, uh, you know, it starts with that awareness or brand awareness then we have them become interested in your content or start engaging by commenting on your content. Then they start to consider, right? Like, oh man, uh, I see they posted this great laser facial. I kind of want those results for myself and they, they are considering doing it. And then maybe you post, uh, you know, that you have a special on that laser facial. And so they take an action by scheduling that consultation or reaching out via DM. Uh, then of course, especially if you're, you're in a clear skin, uh, you'll, you'll want that laser facial and end up purchasing it. And then, uh, you know, at the end of the day, you'll have an awesome result and you'll want to tell all of your friends <laughs> that they should get the laser facial too. So, 
Um, you know, the idea really is to gradually introduce all of your services and products as a solution to the pain points that brought them to the top of the funnel and then really smoothly guide them down to the bottom. And that's another reason you really want to ensure you're having that healthy mix of content that is really geared toward uh, social media users that are at each stage of your funnel. So understanding that every lead is different and it can take a considerable amount of time to get someone all the way through that funnel is really important and where patience and persistence really are virtues. So uh, it can take some users just a few days from discovering your brand social media to take action and make that call or book a consult. And with others, it can take weeks, months, or even years. And that's why it's really important to stick with it and not get discouraged at first if things aren't blowing up right away. And, and I'm sure that there are ways to evaluate very critically. Um, I know like in baseball, there are metrics that they look at. Mm -hmm. um, I always talk about time metrics and how people waste time. There's, uh, I would think, uh, very good metrics or algorithms that you can look at to evaluate what is working and what's not working. Uh, is that correct? Yeah, that's absolutely correct. So we call those insights on the social media platforms. And you can look into your insights, assuming you are properly set up as a business account. So personal accounts don't really have those insights the way that business accounts do. And you can always check in your settings to make sure you're set up as a business account. But you can actually see not only the overall health of your account, how it's performing um, as a whole, but you can actually look at the performance of individual posts. So what's nice is you can go look back and see, hey, I tried something new. How did it perform? Uh, or, hey, you know, I'm looking back at each of my individual posts that have this particular subject matter and they all perform poorly. I'm going to stop doing that. Uh, so it's really helpful to look at your insights to judge how you're doing. That's a great point, Larry. Are you looking at them? <laughs> I didn't know that was my job. <laughs> I, we I, are. I, we are. Don't worry. <laughs> So you're looking at them for us. Yes. Thank yes, you. We are. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He was looking at me like it was my job. And I was like, uh. Well, actually, I was thinking Tave. Like, <laughs> we're just throwing Tave under the bus today. So, right. oh, uh, so, so the whole idea is you get that information if you are a business and you're set up. So somebody can be looking at that and determining what's working and what's not. And you can keep focusing in the direction that is making the biggest difference. Yes, absolutely. So. Constantly tweaking and adjusting your strategy. Uh, and the unfortunate thing is certain things might be working really well for your audience and you're doing them and you get in a good groove and then something about the algorithm changes. And it's not really your audience that doesn't like what you're doing anymore. It's the algorithm. And so you really have to constantly pay attention and tweak and adjust your strategy according to what types of posts and content are working the best for you and your unique audience. Um, another really cool tidbit that you can find in your insights is actually your audience demographics. So you can see, uh -huh. you know, geographically where your audience is located, if they're primarily male or female, and what age range they are. So that's also just a, a neat bit of information for you to glean from that. Yeah, I would think that, uh, you know, what you put out there, the content you put out there might be dramatically different for a young younger crowd versus older. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know, just thinking of some of the uh, M-Sculpt <laughs> <laughs> uh, videos and things that we have and uh, that I see all the time, you know, and, and many of them are on social media. Mm -hmm. And I'm always very impressed, so it would certainly get someone's attention. Now, <laughs> I don't know if, if the 60-year-old female would be that impressed by it, but <laughs> <laughs> it's going to get a younger crowd. How, how do you deal with that? Yeah, that's a great question, Larry. And that's a really great instance of knowing your audience, right? Yeah. Um, so there are some practices where, you know, they really do focus on a more mature audience. And so they, they curate their content for that audience. And then we have those that go after those younger influencer type audiences. And that's where we see those kind of booty popping videos that you're describing, <laughs> right? Um, and then we have some practices that do a really healthy mix of both, you know? Um, they wanna capture content for uh, for all audiences to kind of uh, appeal to a wider range of demographics. Um, and so they kind of really carefully post different, uh, different posts for different audiences and you can actually boost 
to those audiences. So if we really get into advanced strategy, um, something that you can do is actually create advertisements that don't show up on your feed. Uh, so if someone were to go to your profile, they wouldn't see the post on your feed, uh, but only specific audiences that you're advertising this post to, maybe you know people between the ages of uh, 20 and you know 35 who live in uh, you know Phoenix and are interested in body sculpting, working out, you know, et cetera. Uh, I want to see this post. So you can kind of curate on the back end with some advanced advertising as well. All right. Great. Yeah. And real quick, before we end, because I know we're going to be ready to wrap up here soon, but let's talk about some of the changes that we've seen in social media over the last couple of years and, and where we think that that social media marketing is heading from here. Yeah, that's a great question. So, uh, or a great point as well. We've seen a lot of changes very recently uh, in the social media sphere. Uh, one of the biggest changes we touched on earlier, which is that push from photo-based content into video-based content. So definitely get comfortable with that. Um, another push that we are seeing coming through uh, that has already happened is the feed. Um, so when we talk about our feed, uh, that is your homepage. When you start scrolling through social media uh, and you're looking through all the posts of the people that you follow and suggested posts, that's your feed. And you know, typically, historically, the algorithm has largely determined uh, what kind of content shows up on that feed. Um, okay. And so it's kind of guessing what you're going to be liking. Uh, with the changes, they have come out with two different types of feeds that you can utilize, one being your favorites. So these are going to be uh, accounts that you have favorited and follow, and they show up chronologically and not algorithmically. So okay. you can switch into a favorites view, uh, which is really nice. So you're not missing content uh, because the algorithm got it wrong or you're not signing on at the right time of day. Um, so that's one of the big changes. And then a chronological feed, which will show you all of the accounts that you follow in a chronological order. Oh, um, interesting. So, yeah, so that's definitely something to kind of keep in mind. Uh, you want to really check your insights for the best times of day to post. I think most users still use the algorithmic feed, but it's really important to know that those changes have come forth <laughs> um, yeah. typically with a lot of the court cases that have been going on with social is the reason that they've brought those about. Yeah, I think we even had an image on the current feed factors mm -hmm. that are out there with social media to kind of talk about this, that, yes. you know, the post popularity, the frequency of interaction, the liked posts and the past engagement, which are some of the current feed factors that generate this, correct? Yeah, absolutely right. So right now, when you make a post, it doesn't mean that everybody who follows you is going to be shown that post by the algorithm. Um, so some of the factors that the algorithm takes into account to determine if your post is going to go on somebody's feed are the popularity of the post, right? Uh, are a lot of the people who are seeing it interacting with it? Is it a good post? Uh, you know, is it quality? Do we want to show it to people? Um, if yes, then it's going to be shown more. Uh, has somebody frequently interacted with your post in the past? So are they kind of a super fan and the algorithm feels like they really want to see everything that you post, then that's going to really help you to get on the feed. Um, again, high engagement uh, is going to be another factor with that. So if people are kind of liking and commenting on that post, um, or if they've liked a lot of your posts in the past or have engaged with your posts in the past, that's going to be another factor of if it's going to be shown by the algorithm. <laughs> That's very interesting, mm -hmm. you know, and that's the part I think where it's like we struggled because there's so much that goes into this. This is such a detailed marketing area that it's like we're good at what we do as far as treatments and our patient outcomes. But then managing that social media, that's where we ended up with you guys because yeah. <laughs> yeah, we just but, couldn't do it. Yeah. And I think it is a lot. It, I think that's, a lot. That's probably true for a lot of offices if they don't have someone who loves it or has a background in marketing or something like that, that, you know, they're going to go nuts trying to do, you know. Oh, yeah. We kept thinking, okay, just have everyone in the office put a couple posts, a couple things every week, you know, all that. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was pretty funny. I would be interested to see what Larry's <laughs> posts, couple of posts would be every week. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> so pathetic. We did a great one highlighting a uh, little Larry uh, the oh. other day. Uh, which the bobblehead. Yeah, the bobblehead. <laughs> I, I was going to bring the bobblehead with me today, and I, you know, I, it was sitting right there on my desk. 
And I thought, okay, he's going to agree with everything I say, so that's perfect. <laughs> you know, I'll bring him along, but maybe another time. Yeah, yeah. So. Well, you know, we are back here next week. Yes. He could, he could you know, make a little make a showcase trip. next yeah. next week. Okay, all right. No, but that's good. <laughs> well, I think we're pretty close to wrapping up for today. And, you know, for I usually ask Larry, but whenever we have a guest, Mary Claire, I always like to ask if you have any kind of last word of advice for our users as far as, you know, the importance of social media for their medical aesthetics practice. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, one of my best kind of tips or words of wisdom would be to set time on your schedule to actually get it done. Um, if you really are determined to do it yourself and you're not going to work with a company that's going to help you, uh, I found that one of the biggest challenges practices face is having social media fall to the bottom of the list. And so it just never gets done. Um, so definitely scheduling time uh, to take those photos and videos and to you know create your captions and schedule things out is going to be essential for you. Uh, and my other last tip would be to just try it. Uh, once you try it and you start doing it and you play around, you're just going to keep getting better at, and better at it. And like I said, once you start seeing the results and you, you start seeing those great comments from your fans, uh, it really does become very fun and a little addicting. So uh, schedule that time and just start. Perfect. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining us today. And yeah, and for any of you out there who don't want to do this yourself, like us, <laughs> <laughs> like Ann doesn't want to do it, I don't At want to all. do it, you know, we're, that's not us. So if you fit that category, you know, get a hold of someone, and, and I'm sure Mary Claire would be happy to help you out. And again, uh, she's with PGC is how we refer to it, but, but Projected Growth Consulting. And they do a wonderful job. We're thrilled, and that's why we thought everyone else can benefit like we have. Mm -hmm. So if, if you fit in the same category as we do and you'd still like to get your message out there, uh, give them a call, and I'm sure they can help you like they have us. Perfect. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you again for joining us. Oh, thank you. It's been a pleasure. Perfect. Right. And thank you for all of our listeners, and we'll see you guys next time.